Hey everybody, how you doing? I hope everybody's having a good weekend. We're just out here in the garden and I thought I'd turn my camera on and take you for a walkabout and show you how everything's doing. It's getting a lot bigger than the last tour we had. So those are our, some of our tomatoes and they are our San Marzano's. And then over and down in here, we have a few more. They're growing really well. Our carrots are doing really well. I'm amazed at how well they're doing. Like I said in the last video, uh, carrots don't do well here. I don't know why. But I said our cucumbers didn't come up. I have one one lonely one right there. He's struggling, but he's actually growing. So he's doing okay. And our celery, it needs weeding back there, but they're doing pretty good too. So our peas, they are getting ready to be harvested. I've been out here every day for the last probably three four days picking handfuls at a time so we'll be blanching them and putting them in the freezer um, probably in the next couple of days our peppers they're doing really really well um, I actually seen one there they have quite a few I don't know if you can see. There's a lot of flowers in there. And there's one that has a few peppers on it as well. It's doing not too bad. And our onions are doing really, really well. Nathan's over here. So we found out we have Colorado potato bugs and they are nasty little fritters I don't know if I can show you one there's one right, right there they strip the plants they lay eggs and they just make a mess of our plants so He's trying to drop them in water and drown them in soapy water. And hopefully that clears them up. We'll have to do it probably for a few weeks to get rid of them because they've laid eggs already and are just wreaking havoc in the garden. I'll take you over here if we can. We'll show you our zucchini. It is gone crazy. Um, it needs trimming. <laughs> it's so big. It absolutely needs to be trimmed. If you look here, you can see these are leaves with the eggs on them. They, those potato beetles, they lay the eggs on the underside of the leaves and they lay a lot of eggs at one time. So then they hatch and they take over in the garden and just make a complete and utter mess. So hopefully we'll be able to get rid of them in the next few weeks before they totally destroy the potatoes. Okay, I brought you into the sunroom um, so we can have a little chat about this internet outage that Canada went through on Friday. It was crazy, um, but we learned a couple of things from it and some things that you need to prepare for in case it ever happens again. The company 
name, Rogers Telecommunications, is the company that went down. They are a major player here in Canada for our telecommunications. They're actually one of the biggest. And we only have a few companies here that do that. So one of them going out is major. Um, but a few things that went out because of this or was affected because of the outage were a bit surprising. Um, I have Rogers internet and I also have Rogers on my cell phone. So I was completely out. Um, my husband and my son have different carriers for their uh, cell phones. So they were fine. They were up and running. On my cell phone, which was completely dead, I couldn't use it at all. I couldn't call 911. That was a major thing for me. Um, I could have walked out my door and went to a neighbor and, you know, borrowed a telephone, which is fine because we don't have a landline. So if anything had to happen that was major, I could have just you know, borrowed somebody else's phone. However, if you're in a rural area here in Canada, which there are a lot of people in rural, rural areas, couldn't walk out the door and grab a neighbor. Um, so that was a major thing for me um, to see that go down. 911 services were still up and running. It was just the people that had Rogers on their cell phone so that happened um, Interact Company they run all the debit machines here in Canada they were completely down so there was no business here in Canada that were, could take debit so if you did not have cash you were out of luck um, so no gas no groceries um, not even a cup of coffee <laughs> So, always remember to have a few dollars in your pocket at all times, just in case. Uh, ATM machines, they were running. However, some of the banks were affected because they run on the Rogers system. So, if you went to an ATM machine and you were an RBC client... You couldn't get money out of an ATM machine. Um, they just, you couldn't get it. There was a few banks that you could still get money um, out of the ATM machine. For, I think, four or five other different banks, they still worked. But RBC was one of them. I do believe CIBC was another one. <laughs> so, again, big inconvenience. Um, Go Transit in Toronto. They are commuter trains that run in and out of Toronto for people that work in the city and live outside of it. Their e-ticketing systems were down. And again, debit was down. So you couldn't buy a ticket to get on the train. Huge inconvenience if you were already there working, trying to get home and you had no ticket. Um, so that happened. Service Canada was down. Now, not a big inconvenience or anything because it was only a day, but they process passports. They are so behind right now because there are a lot of people that want to travel on their holidays. Summer's here. Everybody wants to go on vacation. And now we can. So Service Canada is so far behind issuing passports. Um, so they've lost yet another day, which is unfortunate, um, for doing those passports. Um, the court system was affected, and this one I never really thought about before, but it was kind of a strange one. Their video conferencing wouldn't work for some courts, so they had to postpone their court, their day, um, to another day because they couldn't do video conferencing or video testifying. So 
and there's a couple of big court cases going on right now. They're in the media um, up here in Canada. So they were postponed. Um, another huge one was uh, the Arrive Can app. Now, this app is used at our border crossings to process man mandatory information such as vaccine history. So if you didn't have a paper copy of your vaccines, you weren't coming through <laughs> and into the country. And that, I don't know what they actually did with that. If it, um, they just turned you away or what exactly they were doing. I know I have um, vaccine information on my phone. So you'd be able to look at it. But I don't know if they actually need a paper copy of it. Um, they were saying that they needed the paper copy. So that was something else. Travelers coming in um, to the country on vacation. If you had driven a long way, you would have had to sit and wait for a day to be able to come through the border, which huge inconvenience for a lot of people. I'm glad it only lasted a day. Um, there was a hospital in Hamilton. Their systems went down. So they were sending emergency chemo patients to another hospital to get treatment, which is huge inconvenience. You're already not feeling well and, you know, having to go to yet another hospital to get treatment. Um, and I did hear, I had our, my radio on, I heard uh, one of the hospitals here calling off-duty doctors and nurses in and I'm sure it was just a just-in-case scenario um, in case they couldn't get them on the phone um, to get them to come in um, so they were doing it over the radio and saying hey you know if you're off duty come in to work so that was there so there was a few things that I never really thought of um, if the internet went down what it would actually affect. So that's a few of the things that it affected here that I seen. Um, and the biggest one being 911. Um, that's major. So if anybody was, you know, had a fire breakout or had a, an emergency illness or anything like that or even a, a break in into your house. You couldn't call 911. So that's major. Um, so that said, food for thought while you're prepping your food um, and you're stocking up on your food, think about other things that you might want to stock up on. Um, put some money away, even if it's a little bit every week, uh, so you have it there just in case those debit machines or ATM machines go down and they're down for a while. Um, think about, you know, how long would I be able to last without cash or without having to, the need to go out and buy food or buy gas, things like that. Just food for thought. Um, just throwing it out there. This was only a day, so it was just a little blip, um, nothing major. But if for some reason it ever went down and was down for a while, um, what do you need to prepare for? So that happened, and I know it's huge in the news right now, and everybody's up in arms about it, but other than the 911 thing happening... Uh, it didn't really affect us at all. We were out for 30 hours, some people only 15 hours, and they're telling us now that it happened because they were updating their system, which I don't know if I believe or not, but <laughs> that's what they're telling us. So that said... <laughs> I'm going to leave it at that. I'll let you, your imaginations, run away with you 
and uh, you can uh, think of maybe why it actually did go down. But it happened, so, and we survived. But on that note, I am going to sign off. I hope you all have a fantastic weekend, and we will see you in a couple of days. I have information from a store manager, a grocery store manager, um, that I shop at. I had a discussion with him about the upcoming shortages that we're going to see. So we'll see you in a couple of days. Have a fantastic weekend. And until then, stay safe.